Razana Muzni, Directress and the Principal of Footsteps Preschool, Dehiwala. My name is Fazra Irfan and I'm one of the directors at Footsteps Preschool. Uh, Footsteps Preschool is a completely play-based school which follows the EYFS curriculum and our age group starts at one and a half. I have a strong passion towards educating young minds. Uh, I'm CASH Level 3 qualified. I have a a uh, bachelor's degree in early childhood education. We follow the uh, earliest foundation stage curriculum and follow it up to the uh, FS2, that is foundation stage 2, age level. I have had wonderful opportunities uh, and I am very enthusiastic, I am very goal driven and uh, I want to make a huge difference in the younger generation of this country. What was your first big breakthrough in the early childhood education industry? Yes, uh, so uh, we look forward uh, with great anticipation to work with you and uh, we hope you make a great contribution to our school. So that was the last words uh, at the interview with GEMS Education 15 years ago. So that was my biggest breakthrough. There was no turning back, it was always results and uh, giving the best uh, for the company. So I made sure that it was always uh, a proven track record and making sure the company got the results that they wanted. So I wish to thank everyone involved for giving me the opportunity to showcase my skills. The rest is all history. As for me, I started my career at Gateway and then joined uh, GEMS Education in Dubai. Uh, from that time, it has always been top going on uh, with the different uh, positions and roles in the earlier sector in GEMS education. And the most highlighted uh, part would be uh, getting selected for the GEMS Warki Award. That was something that uh, really showed me my strengths where I am very good at. And then if I am to talk about the real achievements, it was opening up our own preschool in 2020, in 2019. How do you stay updated and relevant? Uh, read, uh, follow social uh, media content and uh, stay up to date with the organization specifically working with early childhood education. So one of my personal strategies is that I allocate a time every week to look for resources, new, new content and share them with the team. So another added advantage is that since we've been working abroad, so we stay in touch with our pioneers. So that way, you know, networking with people around helps us stay relevant with the current trends, the disciplines and all the new ethics in the sector. Okay, to be updated and relevant, like Fazra said, uh, we, are, uh, we are a licensed school with the Earliest Alliance from UK. So they also, we have a understanding and they give us all the updates which is much relevant to EYFS curriculum. So we are aligned with that and every time they have workshops and uh, seminars, every time we have to log in and participate, not only us, the staff and everybody who is involved in the school. And then uh, we have a huge network because we had, we had been in abroad for so many several years so there is a bit of a contribution from everybody who comes in and it has uh, shown us that uh, social media and uh, different kinds of uh, platforms which we have uh, subscribed and got engaged with that helps us to keep the latest and the most innovative curriculum to deliver to the young ones. How do you incorporate the role of technology in the classroom? Yes, uh, so technology, we can't uh, run away from technology. Sooner or later, the students have to get used to uh, understanding what technology is. So we have blended methodologies that we do in our uh, premises. So there is no limit. So either preparing uh, animated presentations 
or having children use uh, different kinds of devices or even uh, simple games that are engaging. So we make sure that they have a little bit of everything when it comes uh, to technology. And uh, like I said, so it's a techie world and children already know what technology is. So we try and incorporate a little bit of everything into our curriculum. Technology and the curriculum with early years goes hand in hand. There is no way that we can't say that we can't incorporate that in the early years because with the COVID pandemic, what we learned mainly is without technology, we, we wouldn't have survived it. So starting off from that and the contribution that we got from UAE, it was nothing new for us to adapt. So that's the same thing that we are carrying forward and giving to the younger generation who is working with us, saying incorporate technology even for a shorter period of time in the classroom, which helps them to understand what is the best practices. So technology can be used in many different ways. It can be a useful video, it can be an online game, it can be a reading program, it can be ideas for a lesson planning. Because being a hands-on preschool, we need to have a lot of innovation and new methods of teaching. So technology comes very handy and very appropriate for the ages that we do. And the teachers who are with us are very young, so they really incorporate and adapt to it very well. How do you address negative feedback? Uh, with a growth mindset. So we always uh, feel that particularly when it's a negative uh, feedback, it helps us actually uh, look at the cause and then uh, construct our uh, work ethics accordingly. So we take it as constructive criticism actually. So we don't take anything because we don't have a mindset saying that we are always right. So we learn from uh, negative feedback and then we make sure that it turns into a positive feedback in future. Negative feedback and uh, not feeling that person that appreciated in a work environment is, is a not, not a very healthy environment. So as a management team, what we always do is find the root cause, what has been causing, because a negative feedback or a negative feeling is something just doesn't appear all of a sudden. So there has to be a root cause for it. So to find the root cause, you need to really sit with them, understand what the situation is and uh, address it accordingly. And once the issue is being resolved, it's always about a learning curve. They have to understand that uh, everything is a learning curve. You can have negative feedback, you can have bad days, you can have bad comments, but we learn from it. So it's always about how we analyze both sides of the story and then come to a very positive decision and what you have learned from it makes you stronger and a better person. From a what do you have in determining how you perform your role? Uh, personally, uh, flexibility is a skill, so it takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to uh, master. So it's all about how you adapt to challenges and how you adapt to new situations and um, always keeping up that if something goes wrong, there's always a plan B ready. So having worked with the diverse management, I think I have passed that test of being flexible. Flexibility again is a very vast area. It has to be something like you should be able to adapt your next plan if the plan a doesn't work. So it's always with the team that you work, they have to have an understanding and you will always have to have a listening ear. Whatever I decide can't be the correct, it has to be everybody's like contribution and then we work towards what is the best for the children. So moving forward when I say like that, like if it's an event or anything that we are planning from school, it's always about everybody's contribution and then how are we going to deliver it. So on that note, flexibility has been a key thing in the setting that we are working in and it has given me all the liberty to make decisions and carry forward. What has been the most important part of your journey so far? Uh, venturing out uh, on our own. So it has been a plan that we've been having for a really long time. So. Uh, having been in the industry for quite a long time. 
So, and having to meet uh, Ms. Rosanna in the previous uh, workplace. So this was uh, like a dream that we wanted to bring into reality. For It's just the beginning for us. We're a very new uh, venture. So the best is yet to come. So again, I would also say that the most important and the most uh, rewarding and uh, the best part would have been is like opening up our own preschool because it has shown us uh, shown us what is our strengths what are the weaknesses and how we overcome things and standing with a group of people who have different uh, ideas and who have different strengths but we all come together for the same reason same cause that is the main highlight of uh, the event that we are doing how have you handled tough times through the pandemic and the current climate of the country? Uh, I would say uh, COVID-19 is our success story. We ventured in 2019 and COVID hit us in uh, 2020. So we were very new in the market and we were talking about education and early education in uh, particular. So uh, however, the trainings that we had received uh, previously, we and going back to your initial question about incorporating technology so we were one of the first preschools in the country to adapt to online learning so it was not a tough task the switch wasn't tough but then it required a lot of new skills and training our teachers into the new um, norm was a task but we managed that so in terms of flexibility, uh, we distributed study packs uh, to students and um, we, we were flexible on uh, tuition fees and things like that. But uh, it was uh, so successful that we also had enrollments from overseas. So it was all about how we got children engaged in the lessons. Then it's all about uh, delivering the curriculum. So it was about a long two years. So. In every aspect, every decision that we made in terms of online learning was a success story throughout. So, however, even now, it's, uh, we still have our online school going on parallelly because it suits some of the families who opt for virtual learning. And um, we, it's, it's a good tool to keep us connected globally. So, most of our students uh, connect with us uh, globally. It's not only in Sri Lanka. So that ways we are learning new skills, the children are learning new skills, the parents are aware of what is happening in a classroom. So that brings us the whole community together. So and the current climate, uh, particularly in Sri Lanka, so we just adapt, we adapt, readapt, relearn, learn. And uh, we uh, just believe that uh, tough times don't last forever. So wherever we need to make changes, we do that but we make sure that the best is delivered to the students. The COVID pandemic uh, was something that came to us very fast. We opened in 2019, September, and uh, the lockdown was in 2020, March. So it was like a six months period that we had a physical preschool and in within like two, three days, we had to shift it to an online preschool. So with the situation, we had to keep up with the staff. We had to give them training. We had to bring them in and all new equipments were bought just to switch into online. The online was so successful because the study pack and everything and weekly everything was delivered to the parents. It was a huge hit. So the word of mouth helped us a lot. That's how we got a lot of uh, online parents to come forward from abroad, different countries. And it, like Fazra said, we have an online preschool as it yet. With the current climate which is going on in Sri Lanka, what happened with COVID was though we were able to deliver online lessons, the physical development and uh, motor skills and language de de developments were really needed to be looked into. So our intakes were started to become with a high rate because they knew that we are a completely play-based school and all those uh, requirements are going to be met. So that was another highlight with the numbers in the preschool to go high. We have the youngest who is about one and a half, where they talk in sentence because we always emphasize on their language development and everything with the current curriculum which we get approved. What are some areas of growth in your field? Uh, 
I would uh, say the current education system, it is honestly outdated. So uh, we find it very difficult to adapt or uh, train our children to go into uh, mainstream schools. So although uh, we are very innovative and we are very much into uh, uh, play-based learning, but we can't forget the fact that they have to go into mainstream school, which is a very structured uh, education system. So however, we train them for that. And uh, the other challenge that we uh, see is the qualifications and the attitudes of teachers. We don't find the correct staff with the correct attitude to work with young children. So that's like an ongoing challenge. So unless these two things balance, it will always be a, a task to give the best to our young ones. Like I always believe, teaching is not a profession, it's a passion. So unless and until you're passionate with being with the young age group, it's not, be, it's not easy to deliver a lesson. So number one, you have to have your correct qualifications and your input and your commitment towards the workplace and the work that you're going to do. So that's another way of growing. So if you have to put your time and your effort and everything, eventually you're going to have that trust built within to achieve something. Like uh, Fazal was saying, there is a lot of uh, drawn back with the teacher training programs. So earlier, we used to have at least one year's program and one year's training. So we don't see all that happening now because we have come down after about a decade. So there is a huge difference, which is what we are seeing from the time we learned about teacher training programs. So we are trying to balance that and give the best to the children and to the teachers. Because uh, the training program, what the teachers require are like, it has to be more than 150 hours for definitely because teaching is not a, a day's job or you can't master it with looking at a book. It has to come with experience. So these kind of things, uh, people who are in the relevant authorities, they need to really look into having more of uh, proper qualifi qualified places which they can offer these courses and have their curriculum or the course content revised and get a proper feedback done on how the students are performing and regular visits or checkups and where the preschools they are going to get their training done has to be checked. If you had one piece of advice to someone just starting out, what would it be? Uh, you have to be patient and brutally honest. This is not a competing business. Uh, you have to be your own boss. So you have to invest on yourself uh, and be your own boss so that you can uh, have a successful uh, business. So what we personally feel is that if you are genuine with what you do and uh, if you have made an impact and if you do things differently, people will come looking for you. So that's my advice for anyone who is uh, planning on uh, starting up their own. I would really second it because teaching is, again, it's a passion that you have to have towards the young children. So that love, passionate and being honest with what you do counts a lot in this career. And always be humble, be loving towards what you do and always it's, it's okay to ask somebody for guidance, for suggestions and for the correct advice. So there is nothing that uh, anybody else would know less than you or more than you. It's all about knowing the fact and if something is going well, just to get to know how are you doing it kind of a thing so that people are there to help you out. From the what differences do you see in each other as business personalities? She's uh, more of a task-driven person and I'm more of a goal-driven person. So she makes sure the task is done and then I make sure the goal is achieved. So it's a mix of both. Exactly. So 
we both work together and there are things that uh, she has a lot of ideas which we have to really work on and you know to get the things done so complementing each other is what we do best what advice would you give each other uh, advice comes in many forms so uh, sometimes it's constructive uh, criticism uh, other time it's just direct conversations we just uh, we are just very clear with uh, what we have to say to each other and uh, so we've known each other more than a decade so we are friends more than business partners so and we, very, we are very well aware not to mix uh, both up but uh, my biggest advice is that uh, just continue to be the genuine person you are that's it knowing Fazra for the last more maybe 15 years or so it's always it has become more like uh, friends and family together so both the families are together and she has taught me a lot she's very humble she's very loving and she knows what has to be done she always gives priority to work and uh, i'm the one who always lags behind so pulling me up and getting the things sorted that's what she does it well so what i would say is she's a very i would say the most sweetest person that i've ever met so she will continue to be that and I know that she, she will be that. I'm touched. <laughs> What's your impression of each other with regards to handling stress? Uh, stress, uh, we don't take stress together. It comes in turns. So it's <laughs> yes. either her or me. So when she's stressed, uh, I lift her up. And then when I'm stressed, she lifts uh, me up. So we just uh, laugh it off. Most of the time, we just laugh it off and uh, think about the good things that we have done together so we really don't take stress into our heads. It's like uh, though we have well, we work together we always we never agree on the same thing most of the time. Most yeah. of the time she has a different idea I have a different idea so what complements it at least we put at the end of the day it's 50 50 so like she said like uh, stress comes in different ways I get stressed out for different reasons she gets it in a different way so discussing it and knowing each other so well, I think that helps us to help each other how to handle the situation. Yeah, sometimes it is just like, just like a shouting from her, like just going back to work, this is not stress, and then we go back together. <laughs> so that calm and peaceful environment or that energetic uh, room makes both of us more motivated and more happy. And uh, it's, it's a daily thing kind yeah. of. A, your personality plays a major role in your success. True or false? Uh, very true. So uh, I believe there is uh, no magic formula uh, in uh, being successful. Uh, it's about uh, you want to be treated how you treat others. So I'm, uh, I, I just believe in that. So you just uh, make sure that you're doing the right thing, you're genuine, and uh, everything will fall into place believing in yourself and being that role model who you want to others to follow because I think Fajr and I have a lot of uh, young teachers who are with us so they always look up to us so knowing that personalities and different people so getting them on the same page is what we do best what do you think about this program uh, excellent uh, and thank you so much for reaching uh, us uh, we've been watching this program uh, quite uh, well uh, and then there have been some uh, wonderful personalities coming to this program and we have taken best advice and best uh, practices uh, from them. So it's, it's very good. It's, it's really good to raise awareness uh, to the community. It's, uh, it's a good way to uh, show our work to the community. So continue to do this uh, as long as you can. Thank you. I would say the program is a huge success watching the videos and all the updates it was it's like giving a lot of information because though we say that we follow uh, channels from abroad knowing to get to know people who are here and who have really strived and come out during the covid time and small business entrepreneurs it was a very very uh, it felt very good to know that these people are doing very well even with a, such a small country and knowing the situation which is going on we wish all the success to this group of people who are doing it and all the very best.